Welcome to this college worship. The Lord be with you. Easter is coming up. You might recall Ash Wednesday a few weeks back now, which began 40 days of Lent. Lent is a time when Christians have traditionally begun to fix their attention on the events that we're now going to take a look at. Lent finishes just before Easter Sunday, and that is a day when the church focuses on and celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now this college worship is based around the kind of service that you might expect to hear in some churches on that day. Styles of service would differ all over the world, but the basic things being remembered and celebrated are the same. At this time, Christians remember the events that took place about 2,000 years ago in the life of Jesus Christ. I'll have a go at explaining them and what they mean later on from the perspective of those who believe them. But firstly, here's a brief summary. Easter is a time when we remember the story of Jesus, his betrayal by Judas Iscariot, leading to his trial, followed by his death on the cross, and what Christians believe he achieved, that is forgiveness and reconnection with God. Then how he was placed in a tomb, at which point the disciples' hopes turned into despair, but then how he rose from the dead was seen to be alive and the love and the hope for this life and eternity was offered as a gift to the world. All the events that make up Easter are often referred to as Holy Week. Two of the significant days of that week are Good Friday and Easter Sunday. On Good Friday, Jesus is crucified, and on Easter Sunday, Christians all around the world believe he was raised from the dead. So today, combining words and images, we're going to reflect on the meaning of the events of Easter. Now in a church service on Easter Sunday, you might hear the words that follow. A greeting followed by an affirmation that Jesus, the Son of God, has risen from the dead and also words that set the scene for a service, affirming who God is, his mercy and our gratitude in response to that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you and we give thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated on the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Now, a reading from the Gospel of Luke uh, in chapter 24. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. So here's a brief summary then of what these events on that first Easter mean for the many millions of people throughout history 
who have chosen to follow Jesus. The women went to the tomb very early in the morning and they were expecting to see Jesus there, but he wasn't. Instead, they met some angels and the angels say, why do you look for the living amongst the dead? This is because Jesus spent quite a lot of time explaining to his disciples that he was going to die and then rise from the dead after three days. But they hadn't grasped this at all. And it seems that the women who went to the tomb hadn't expected Jesus to rise from the dead either. They expected to see him there. The disciples, because they thought Jesus was well and truly dead, were initially despondent and afraid because they thought Jesus had gone forever. Neither the women at the tomb nor the disciples had grasped the fact that, according to the New Testament, Jesus was no ordinary person, and that he would defy death, and that what he was doing in his death on Good Friday and resurrection on Easter Day was going to change their lives and the lives of many others throughout history. They would understand that later, but now they hardly knew what to think. Christians understand that Jesus' resurrection was confirmation that when he said he was dying for people in order to reconnect them with their creator, it was not just words. The resurrection from the dead confirmed that he was not just making wild claims, nor was he just a wise man or teacher, but that he had divine origins which are from eternity, and that somehow, through his death on Good Friday and resurrection on Easter Day, he would be able to bring about forgiveness, reconnection with God, and ultimately the reversal of death. Christians believe that these are the problems that God wants to solve through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in services, especially on Easter Day in church, what Jesus achieved is celebrated as the great hope for the world. This whole message is known as the Gospel, which means good news. After the events at that first Easter, the disciples, confident that Jesus was alive and in response to his command, spread the message of the Gospel, starting in Jerusalem and then into the whole world. And here we are today, or I am anyway, talking about events that have changed the lives of many people since that first Easter day that Christians believe Jesus, the Son of God, died, rose again, and can reconnect us with our Creator. Here are some words that describe what this means, and you can just listen to them, or if you want, you can use them as a prayer. Lord of all life and power, who through the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death, to make all things new in him. Grant that we, being dead to sin and alive to you in Jesus Christ, may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour, glory and might, now and in all eternity. Amen. Our final blessing. May Christ who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his new life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>